Let's check out some clips by Joe Olstein and compare what he has to say to the Bible. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. You know, there's a horrible trend in the church today of getting away from the message of the gospel, getting away from teaching out of the word of God, and just giving self-help motivational speeches on a Sunday morning. And it is absolutely destroying what the church was actually created to be. When you look at Acts and how the church was originally created, we look nothing like the original church. We sound nothing like the original church. We are completely separated from what the church should truly look like to honor God and bring people into a right relationship with God and fellowship with God. And you know, in 1 John, it tells us that when we fellowship with each other as fellow believers, we fellowship with Jesus. And you know, there are many ways that the church is really failing to be the real and true church of God. And it shows itself in many different ways. One of the most prominent is the self-help, motivational speeches, never really getting into the Word of God, maybe having a verse here or there, and then completely blowing it way out of context to make it sound like something that was you know, in the Bible so that you could live a victorious life. And it's leading to this kind of thing. Over a third of senior pastors believe good people can earn their way to heaven. This is absolutely heretical teaching. This has nothing to do with Christianity. It says at least a third of senior pastors in the United States believe one can earn a place in heaven by simply being a good person, according to a nationwide survey. This is not correct. This is not right. The only way to heaven is repenting of our sins and realizing that we are sinners in need of a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, took our sin to the grave, and Jesus was in the grave for three days. And he rose again on the third day, defeating sin and defeating shame and guilt on our behalf so that we can come to him and be declared righteous through Jesus Christ. Not that we are righteous, but we've been declared righteous through Jesus Christ as our Savior, if we believe and receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. The Daily Grace Company is a wonderful company. They have Bible study guides, they have pens and highlighters, they have journals, they have prayer cards, verse cards, Bibles. They just put out their most requested Bible study ever, and it's on the book of Esther. It's 50% off right now. If you use our link in the description below, it helps us out. Uh, it costs you nothing, but it will help us out. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and be a part of this community with us. I would love that. And please hit that thumbs up button as well. You know, when you like this video, YouTube pushes it out to more people and it would really help. And you know, this got me thinking when I read this article that there are a majority of churches out there that are not proclaiming the gospel and not faithfully reading and declaring and preaching the word of God as found in the Bible, and there's no one that avoids the scripture best than Joel Olstein. Now, Joel Olstein, I believe, is the figurehead of this movement, the motivational speech movement on Sunday mornings, and there are many that follow in that same path, but of course, Joel Olstein is considered America's pastor. He's the everybody pastor, saved, unsaved, doesn't matter. He's your pastor, and that's an issue. Let's check out some clips by Joe Olstein and compare what he has to say to the Bible. Christian, but I don't ever do anything to help. What if you're Jewish or Muslim and you don't accept Christ at all? You know, I, I just, I'm very careful about saying who and would and wouldn't go to heaven. I don't know. I think only God. you believe you have to believe in Christ. I so believe they're it. They're wrong, aren't they? Well, people? I don't know if I believe they're wrong. I believe here's what the Bible teaches. And from the Christian faith, this is what I believe. But I just think that only God can judge a person's heart. I've spent a lot of time in India with my father. And, uh, you know, I don't know all about their religion, but I know they love God. How dare you? Absolute blasphemy. The thing with Joe Olstein is that he doesn't teach the word of God on Sundays. And he freely admits this, as I'll show you in a clip coming up. He does not preach the word of God on a Sunday. But, and then he claims to believe what the word of God says. But he never shares the word of God. Now, this is Acts 4, and this is where Peter and John were brought before the council to answer 
for what they are doing. Answer for their faith. And Peter says, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And of course, John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Phoenix, Arizona, hello. Hello, Larry, you're the best. And thank you, Joe, Joel, for your positive messages and your book. I'm wondering, though, um, why you sidestepped Larry's earlier question about how we get to heaven. Um, the Bible clearly tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, and the only way to the Father is through him. That's not really a message of condemnation, but of truth. Yeah, I would agree with her. I believe that. So that's what Jew is not going to heaven. No, I, I, I mean, can Well, no, here's my thing, Larry, is I can't judge somebody's heart, you know. I don't know. Only God can look at somebody's heart. And so, I don't know. I just, to me, it's not my business to say, you know, this one is or this one isn't. I'm just saying, here's what the Bible teaches, and I want to put my faith in, uh, you know, in Christ. And I, I just, I think it's wrong when we go around saying, you know, you're not going, you're not going, you're not going, because it's not exactly my way. I'm just, but I'm not going to be the God. believe your way. I believe my way. I believe my way with all my heart. But for someone who doesn't share it, well, it is wrong. Isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I mean, well, I don't know if I look at it like that. I would I would present my way, but I'm just going to let God be the judge of that. I mean, I don't know. How dare you? And then Joel Olstein goes on to say, I don't know. And you, if you notice, he is sidestepping everything. In fact, a caller called in and called him out and said, the fact that Jesus is the only way to the Father, that's not a message of condemnation. It's actually a message of, it's a message of hope and of truth. And of course, Joel Olstein has nothing to say to this because it would exclude many people that he's trying to include because he has to keep his kingdom going. Jesus said in John 3.3, 3, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Also, Matthew 3, 7 through 8 but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruit worthy of repentance. So here's Joel Olstein once again on Larry King. This one's a lot more recent, but just as disturbing. You know, I know I'm not a traditional pastor in terms of I'm just going down teaching scripture by scripture because, you know, a lot of my you know, what I would teach would just be more how to live a, a great life. Does nobody see the issue in this? Uh, how to lead a great life. No man is great in and of themselves. We need Jesus Christ in order to be anything. It says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, which Joel Olstein himself said he doesn't do. He doesn't teach from the word of God, but it is profitable for teaching. It must be taught. And it says for reproof, which is a form of reprimanding. It's, it's, it's correcting people. And then it goes on to say for correction. We must use the word of God to correct those who are not walking faithfully with Jesus Christ, including ourselves. When we read God's word, we learn how to correct ourselves through the leading of the Holy Spirit and say, I'm not going to continue sinning like this. I'm not going to continue walking down this path of destruction. And we're led by the spirit through the word of God to correct the way that we are walking that isn't in step with the Lord. And then it goes on to say, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We are not complete unless we are completed through the teachings of the word of God. That is how we learn to do what Joel Olstein is claiming he's trying to do outside the Word of God. And it will never happen unless we are faithfully teaching God's Word so that we can reproof, correct, train in righteousness, and be made complete for every good work that God has for us. And 2 Timothy 4 says, I charge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Again, there's those phrases again. Reprove, to reprimand. Rebuke, to reprimand. To, and, and exhort, to uplift people in 
their correction. So as they're being corrected in the word of God and learning to live in a way that is pleasing to God, then exhort them in that. Don't exhort people in their sinful state to become just better at being sinners. That That's never going to do it. It just leads people to destruction. And it says, for a time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. Joel Olstein suits people's own passions because he never says anything about sin. He never corrects or reproves. He never does anything that causes people to feel conviction. And he freely admits that. Although he does exhort people, but again, in their sin. (laughs) Verse four, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. People love myths. They love to create their own gospel. A gospel that says, I am good enough. I am this, I am that, I am everything I need to be to live my best life now. And they create for themselves a false gospel that leads them to hell. The new book is Breakout. I want to ask you about what do you make of Carl Lutz, this different kind of pastor? You know, I like Carl. He's a friend of mine. I've known him for years. And, you know, he'll reach people that I won't reach. I mean, he's not in a suit. Younger people, right? Yeah, he's not in a suit and tie. He's got a mohawk and tattoos. But you know what? I'm for everybody. Do you believe that only Christians can be in relationship with God? No, I believe that when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, in the way I read that, Jesus said, he is the, he's the road marker. He's the map. So I think God loves people so much that whether they accept or reject him, he's still gracious and he's still moving and he's still giving you massive red blinking lights for Mm -hmm. chances to take a a right turn where maybe you would take a left, but I believe God loves people. And that's what this whole gospel is based on. It's love. You take the love out of it. We've got a moral book. This is one of the issues is that you'll never hear Joel Olstein call out anything, anything. Joel Olstein has the biggest blinders on in the world. He refuses to feel conviction. He refuses to teach sin. He refuses to teach the gospel. He refuses to, to teach the word of God verse by verse at any time, at any point. He, he believes that life is better when you just put on blinders You don't see anything negative. You don't see anything wrong or bad or you don't feel anything wrong or convicted or you you don't, you just don't feel anything. Don't feel the real world. Just pretend you're happy and you'll be happy. And also there are dozens of times when Joel Olstein has been on with Oprah. uh, Joel and Oprah are very close friends, which should be concerning in and of itself. And here's yet another example of Joel Olstein not representing the gospel. But I believe there are many paths to Jesus. You know, you don't know how Jesus would reveal himself to somebody. So I'm not into excluding people. There are many paths to Jesus. No, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. That is the path to Jesus. There are not many paths to Jesus. There is one path to Jesus and it's through repentance of your sin. And there's been many times where Joel and Oprah have done conferences together, and one was about Joel Olstein and his sermon called I Am. Check out how sick this is. You can watch Pastor Joel's entire I Am sermon. Don't ever say anything negative about yourself. You may feel it, but just, you know, zip it up and, and make those positive declarations. It takes time, though, because yes. from the time I heard the I Am sermon, could you lead us in a few I Ams today? Absolutely. Okay. I am strong. I am strong. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am confident. I am confident. I am secure. I am secure. I am talented. I am talented. Your worldview is wrong. Your philosophy is wrong. It's not just wrong. It's an affront to God. So Joel Olstein says, just zip up all that negative energy that you have going on. Don't think those bad thoughts. Now, I'm not saying that if you have a negative thought about yourself to dwell on it, or you are that thing, that negative thing you're thinking about. That's not what I'm saying at all. But 
the only cure that Joel Olstein teaches is to just pretend like those bad thoughts aren't there. Just zip it up, just hide away from it and it'll go away eventually. Just believe you're good enough. That's putting a band-aid over the true issue. The issue is, is that you don't know Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus is true peace attainable. First John, read First John, the, the whole book of First John. It is wonderful and it will bring you to your knees in front of Jesus. And then he goes on to have these I am chants. So how blasphemous is this? Joe Olstein has a sermon called I am, where it's all about I being the I am. So I am this, I am that, whatever. Insert whatever prosperity thing that you can think of. And it's all about me. It's not about me. In Exodus 3.14, we see that God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. I am is a specific name for God that God gave to himself, shared with Moses and said to give this to the people of Israel. And then you see in John chapter eight, where Jesus says that he is the I am, obviously claiming to be God and Jesus is God. Verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Am. And immediately, check out what the Pharisees did. They picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself away. Jesus was saying, I am. He was taking the name of God upon himself, and this infuriated the Pharisees because they knew exactly what he meant when he said, I am. He knew that he was claiming to be God. And I am isn't just a statement of saying, I am God. I am is stating, that not just that I was or have been, but I am. Even before the foundations of the world, I am. Past, present, future. God is and always was and always will be. And it is ex extremely sickening to see Joel Olstein make this I am declaration for all the people in the crowd, for everybody that reads the book to say, I am. You know, you've been criticized for church light. Yeah, that's right. For a cotton candy yeah. message. Do you feel like you're cheating people by not telling them about the hell part? The no, because, part? No, I really don't because it's a different approach. You know, it's not hellfire and brimstone, but I say most people are beaten down enough by life. They already feel guilty enough. You don't have to remind people they're sinners. They know. How dare you? So Joel Olstein claims to have a different approach than what the Bible says to proclaim. That people need to repent of their sins or else they will spend eternity in hell separated from God. Ah, oh, I don't like that. That sounds a little too mean and rude and just not very I am. You know, it's through this type of teaching that Joel Olstein claims is, you know, just a different approach that leads people to hell. And in the interview clip, he says, people are already beat up enough in life already. I don't need to beat them up by what, telling them the truth? Joel Olstein's approach is to not be rude by telling people that they're sinners and you know stuff like that. Here's the Bible's approach. In Romans 3, starting in verse 11, it says, none is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths are ruin and misery. In the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Do you see how it says the way of peace they have not known? It says that no one is good, not one. Nobody is good. 
their mouth, and then it describes these people that think they're good, but their throat is an open grave. They're, there's venom on their lips. Their mouth is used for curses and it's filled with bitterness. Their feet shed blood and in their path is ruin. And then it says the way of peace they have not known. You can try to teach all these people peace by using a different method, but it doesn't mean that there will be fear of God in them. It says that there is no fear of God before their eyes. You know, it's through all this this different method of teaching people how to be a great person outside of biblical thought or biblical morality or living as the Holy Spirit leads us to. Forget all that stuff. I have a different way. This is an issue. It's an epidemic. And so many churches are following this same type of formula. When it really comes down to it, their message is that we can be God. The church needs another reformation, if you will. The church needs to be reformed today because it is not a church that is pleasing to God. Let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And hey, if you feel led to want to give to this channel, there's a little money icon under this video. You can leave a super thanks and your donations would really help us continue to put out content on a regular basis. But please, do not feel any pressure to give whatsoever. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And please hit that thumbs up button as well. When you like this video, it gets pushed out to more people and I would really appreciate it. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.